I would like to welcome you all today's seminar, which is titled China-Pakistan Free Trade Agreement, where we are right now and where we are going. Before I introduce our panel, I would like to request Dr. Hina Aslam, a research fellow and the head of Pakistan China Study Center at STPI, to give opening remarks. Ma'am. Thank you, Amna. Um, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, and um, our um, fellow colleagues here at STPI, I would like to um, greet you all on the behalf of China Study Center of STPI to this seminar. And it is very gratifying to um, note that the agenda of the seminar covers um, this recently agreed Pak China Free Trade Agreement, where we are and where we move forward. So um, just for a little background, um, like in previously, China had signed two FTAs, in one in 2006, that was trade in goods, and trade in services in 2009. And the first FTA was more focused on the, the um, to get the duty-free access to Chinese market on cotton fabrics, leather goods, iron, steel, sports, industrial, alcohol, and um, while on the other hand, Pakistan gave access to China mainly on the machinery, chemicals, fruits, vegetables, and raw materials for industry and engineering sector. Uh, the second FTA was more comprehensive and allowed um, trade in goods, investments, and the services sector. And the aim was to start an investment regime in infrastructure, education, R&D, IT, tourism, and environmental services. Um, so Pakistan had allowed market access to China in 11 sectors and over 100 subsectors, while China had committed Pakistan access to 11 sectors and over 130 subsectors. So China gave market access to Pakistan more than it gave to any other country. However, later on, the Chinese government committed more concessions to ASEAN countries, where Pakistan had comparative advantage. And um, so it kind of atrophied the scope of agreement and benefits Pakistan could have reaped from the agreement. So and despite the um, unsuccessful um, signed FTAs um, living up the mark. Both parties have thoughtfully concluded the second FTA, in which China has agreed to provide duty-free access and unilateral concession to 313 Pakistani product lines over the next 15 years. And uh, under the new FTA, Pakistan would commission approximately 65% of uh, its market with Chinese exports whereas China would open up 90% of its market for Pakistani exports. Also allowing, uh, allowing the liberalization of 75% trade lines and 90% trade value in the FTA has been agreed. And this would also help in um, remedying the um, colossal trade deficit between the two countries, which was around 10 billion USD last year. And as we know that China is the world's largest importer and provides the world's largest market for exports. China's annual imports figure stands out at USD 2 trillion, whereas 64 billion of its imports are what Pakistan produces. Until July 2018, last year, Pakistan exports to China averaged around 1.2 billion per annum. Uh, 120 to 150 million per month USD. Um, exports improved to about 200 million dollars per month from July 2018 to March 2019. However, even if Pakistan manages to capture 10% share of those 64 billion Chinese imports, it can experience a significant increment in exports reaching up to 6.5 billion USD. So in a nutshell, the recently signed FTA between China and Pakistan yields a splendid opportunity for the two nations. Um, so amidst, amid the um, national and um, global economic tranquility, um, and the government having a fancy to shift the Pakistans um, from a consumption-oriented to the export-oriented economy, um, the culmination of second phase of FTA is none less than a silver lining for Pakistan. With this, um, I would like to ask Amina to introduce our distinguished guests and then um, follow up the discussion. Thank you. 
Thank you, Dr. Hina, for the brief overview of the previous and the current FTA. Let me start the discussion by introducing our esteemed panelists. Today, first of all, we are joined with by Dr. Wang Zigwa, Minister, Counselor, Economic and Commercial Section uh, for Chinese Embassy in Pakistan, Mr. Mustafa Heder Sayyid, the Executive Director, Pakistan China Institute, Islamabad. Soon we will be joined by Mr. Hassan Daudbert, the Project Director for CBIC Coordinator and the Focal Person for CPEC, Mr. Malik Shahid Saleem, President for Double Pindi Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Uh, thank you so much for coming today, sir. Uh, first of all, we'd like to have, I would like to introduce Ms. Dr. Wang Shua, Minister, Counselor, Economic and Commercial Section for Special Remarks, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, it's my great pleasure to attend uh, today's uh, seminar uh, because I think the trading, uh, trade issue is a very important one uh, between uh, bilateral economic and uh, economic their, uh, landscape. Uh, right now, just as they are produced uh, uh, introduced by the uh, head of the SD, SDPI and Mr. Hina Aslam, he have a, uh, she gave us a very uh, uh, clear picture of the uh, bilateral trade. Now I just uh, would like to share some points in the FTA and uh, and beyond. There are some issues we need to uh, further and to study or to discuss in the future. Uh, about the FTA between the China and the uh, their uh, Pakistan, we know and uh, we already signed the FTA uh, the 13 years ago in the 2006. So actually speaking, there uh, after that and the bilateral trade has significantly developed. Uh, so far, their uh, trade volume has tri tripled compared with the 13 years years ago. But it is it. But at the same time, there is also some their issues exist. Uh, particularly, there is a big imbalance, uh, trade imbalance between the two countries. So that that's a big concern we know, and from their uh, both their uh, Pakistani government and also from their business circle of the Pakistan. Uh, but but for this issue, uh, I would like to uh, say that uh, for their Chinese Chinese government, because China now is a uh, world factory. So he has become their largest trade partner for over 100 countries in the world. So uh, for China, he never has the intention to uh, seek their trade surplus uh, with uh, any other trading companies, let alone or Iron Brothers. So I think the main reason, fundamental reason behind this uh, trade imbalance is that uh, structural uh, problems between us because for uh, China we have a strong manufacturing base so it's uh, export more uh, high value product to Pakistan but we import lower relatively lower valued um, mostly primary goods from the Pakistan to China I think that that's the main reason why there is a big imbalance between us uh, so that that's our first question but but uh, the Chinese government put more attention on this issue. So after 11 rounds of ne negotiation, we finished, finalized the, the phase two FTA uh, between both countries. So which is signed this April on the sideline of the second Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation held in Beijing. So this is a good news. This we, we believe it will uh, inject the important impetus to their uh, bilateral trade and the economic links between two countries. And we also uh, believe that uh, uh, finalization of the phase two FTA between two countries will become the catalyst for the further bilateral development between our two countries. And we hope and uh, uh, this uh, phase two FTA could uh, make and create more chemistry and uh, between the two countries and uh, between two business communities. Uh, so far, the, uh, China has become their uh, uh, largest trade partner uh, for Pakistan uh, for their five consecutive uh, physical years. And also, China is uh, the second their, uh, uh, second their uh, import destination for their uh, Pakistan for also for five consecutive years. So that, that's the uh, uh, first issue. And the second is about their phase two FTA. In this, uh, in this uh, the, uh, protocol, 
uh, Chinese government give some special arrangement and to take uh, consideration seriously of their requests or concerns from our Pakistani friends. Uh, just as introduced by uh, Dr. Hina, uh, Hina Aslam, the, there is a, now is a level of the trade uh, liberalization has risen substantially from the previously 35% uh, to now it's 75%. Uh, so, and uh, in the breakdown, uh, in terms of the trade volume, China provide 90% uh, of their uh, uh, zero duty uh, zero duty to uh, Pakistani products. China only received their 67% of their zero duty products. So that just show their uh, or attitudes or uh, their concrete efforts to solve their, the issues related to their trade imbalance. Uh, so I, I think the uh, uh, we will continue. Now it's uh, uh, phase two FDA is waiting for uh, approval from the both sides. We hope this could be signed, uh, could be approved as soon as possible. Then maybe in next year and we can more Pakistani products will uh, enter into the Chinese market. So that's uh, our uh, expectation from this phase two uh, their uh, negotiation. Uh, third issue I would like to share is about their beyond FTA. Uh, because now is a, uh, uh, let me first give a very, very one uh, simple example. Because uh, uh, everybody know their Pakistani mango is in, it's uh, had their best quality in the world, in the, in the world. And every Chinese, when they visit Pakistan, when they, uh, uh, they uh, uh, taste the, the mango of the Pakistan, they enjoy it, they like it very much. But it's a few, the mango products uh, are seen in the Chinese market. China has their largest uh, consum consumption market in the world, but it's a uh, few mango products from their Pakistan. It's, uh, we are also puzzled because there is no hurdle uh, from the market access. We, we have already many years ago granted their market access to Pakistani Mongo. So there is something is behind and this, uh, this phenomenon. So we uh, needed to study work and uh, to, to know how to find a appropriate way and to explore Chinese market. So uh, from this perspective, so we, uh, I suggest and also it's uh, from their Chinese embassy, we are always doing to bridge the gap and the between this uh, sector. We, uh, so far, and we have uh, uh, several platforms or channels uh, could be pushed their bilateral trade forward. Why is there, uh, uh, China is holding every year, holding their uh, China International Import Expo, the held in Shanghai. And the last day is the first ever uh, time in, 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 their, in Shanghai. And uh, well, Pakistani, uh, is invited as a guest of the state to attend this uh, this expo and uh, uh, they achieve their fruitful outcome. So this year we continue to invite Pakistani business community to attend this expo. The second is there uh, we encourage and more uh, business interaction uh, activities held in. Uh, in Beijing, uh, in China, or in Pakistan here, because we have lots of their uh, uh, business community. They are show their keen interest in explore the Chinese market. So we hope to uh, uh, provide our facilitation for this, uh, uh, th those activities. The third, the, the third suggestion is that uh, uh, we hope to, uh, because now we know under the leadership of Prime Minister Imran Khan, the Pakistani government has adopted uh, uh, pro-business their policies. So we hope to this new uh, industrial policy could be adopted very quickly and to uh, to do a lot more in their easy of doing business and to improve upgrading its uh, business climate and for their foreign investors. Investors. So if more uh, foreign investor, uh, more Chinese investor can come to can invest in Pakistan, there we will help uh, build uh, their uh, manufacturing c capacity here. So that will uh, lay a strong and a fundamental 
uh, foundation for export expansion in the world and also including to the Chinese market. So we, we hope and uh, uh, we can work closely together with the Pakistani federal government, local government, and also we are ready and we need to hear the uh, suggestion and the proposals from their uh, just like SDPI and other their China Study Institute, the other think tank, or their suggestion from the experts here, so we can uh, collaborate closely to uh, promote more export from the Pakistan to Chinese market. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Dr. Wang, for sharing your point of view. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, I would like to take a moment to welcome Mr. Hassan Daud Bhatt, who's just joined us. And so we'll start from you, we'll start a discussion with you. What are your views about this second phase of China-Pakistan free trade agreement, where Pakistan is right now, and where we are headed? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. You know, uh, Naturally, all of us are aware of the fact that FTA 1 did not work. So that's the, that's the stepping stone for us to, you know, it was the stepping stone for us when we were moving forward. And also the other fact that was uh, actually supplementing the entire discussion and negotiation was entering into the phase two of CPEC. While we were entering phase two and the industrial cooperation, we thought, and all our experts and, uh, you know, industry specialists, we thought that perhaps we should do this FTA2 uh, almost at the same time that we are uh, entering the phase two of CPEC, because in that industrial cooperation remains one of the most important pillar and also agriculture cooperation. So therefore, uh, initially we did our own uh, due diligence and, you know, had our own uh, expert group meetings within within Pakistan. There were about a series of meetings in the last three years that I was engaged with it. And before that, even even then, you know, the, the government was getting uh, a lot of concerns as far as FTA 1 was concerned. And the main reason behind that was uh, balance of payment issues and some of the other. But the good news is that now, China has been, uh, during our negotiation, almost uh, lengthy and extensive negotiation, China, has, Chinese government has been very kind in, in agreeing to most of our requirements. Uh, that includes, uh, you know, uh, implementation period, which is going to be around 15 years, I believe, and also, um, you know, safeguard for our industry. You know, each industry forwarded their list of, uh, um, you know, concerns with respect to the safeguard that they wanted to have and and we were able to actually negotiate well and the Chinese were able to support us in that and I would appreciate the Chinese embassy actually in in supporting us in also we have we are in the process of including why I say we are because almost all the details have been finalized it's just matter of time because the MOU has already been signed we've all are also been able to include the balance of payment provision in this and that that is going to help I'm sure we all know that uh, out of uh, 15 around 15 billion worth of trade that we have uh, the trade deficit is quite alarming but uh, you know uh, when we move forward in, in CPAC and uh, and when we have this FTA, we're trying to encourage our business community to actually step forward and support the government in, in the B2B joint ventures that we are trying to promote. And in that, the main uh, area that Prime Minister and his team has actually directed, the Commerce Ministry, the, uh, the BOI, and also Ministry of Planning is Agriculture. Uh, because if you look at the tariff lines that have been, that out of 313 tariff lines, uh, about 100 are for agri-based projects. And if Pakistan and Pakistani, uh, you know, agriculture community uh, could, especially the leading business player, could, you know, step up and do joint ventures with, with, the, with the Chinese counterpart, I, I think there is a lot that they can leverage. We have natural endowment. And recently, when uh, the foreign minister visited Mr. Wangi, 
there was discussion on cherry, onion, potato, and tomato, and I think he just referred to that. Uh, but having said that, the, the opportunity is there. But what challenge I see is is our preparation, in you, both at the private sector and also at perhaps at uh, at level. And but we the silver lining is that we know the way and we know the we we are doing our SWOT analysis and you know looking at our strengths. And the other good thing is that China is actually supporting Pakistan in our in our cause to promote business. So CPAC industrial cooperation with the CZs and and I'm sure you you are aware of the fact that uh, recently during the visit of their vice uh, president, an MOU for uh, uh, you know uh, was signed wherein uh, actually two MOUs were signed. One was uh, foot and mouth disease free zone in Bahawalpur area. So that would actually encourage socio-economic development in that area and also, you know, we've been trying to promote our beef and, uh, you know, meat and because of certain quarantine issues, we could not make big headway. Also, most of the trade happening from Sust and from the Kashgar border has not been significant that we can write home about. So I, I think with this foot and mouth disease free zone coming up and some of the uh, joint ventures that are expected in near future in agriculture sector, I think this this uh, FTA2 is at, at the right time and giving us the right sort of opportunity that we can compete with ASEAN. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Um, Mr. Yeah, sure. Please. Uh, just add a few words. I forgot. Uh, just uh, Mr. Hassan, uh, remind me. It's about uh, now uh, Chinese embassy, Chinese government uh, work closely with uh, their uh, Ministry of Food Security and Research. We are uh, pushing forward several uh, Pakistani uh, comparative agricultural products to get the market access to China. To China. Why is their cherry? Uh, cherry now have finished their uh, on-site visit by their Chinese expert. So we are waiting for the uh, their, uh, the, the, the further uh, reply from the China customers. The second the product is uh, onion. Onion now is we are waiting for their uh, uh, technical materials from their Pakistani side. After that, maybe we can exempt some of their uh, procedures to expedite of the process of the approval by the Chinese government. The third product is a potato. It's the same procedures. The third is uh, uh, mentioned by their, uh, Mr. Hassan is uh, the beef. So now is we are, always the issue is related to the quarantine, quarantine issue. So uh, we are now building their uh, FMD free zones. So after that, we can push forward uh, quickly for th those the agricultural products could be entered into the Chinese market. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, now I'd request most of Mustafa Heather Zeli, if you want to add something to this. Please, the floor is all yours. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'd like to begin by uh, saying that I think we need to change the, our mindset when we look towards China. And whether it's CPEC, whether it's free trade agreement, we look for concessions and we look for special uh, packages because of our iron brother relationship, because of our uh, uh, all-weather friendship. and we take uh, the relationship inadvertently for granted. What ends up happening is, is that we don't develop our own market. We don't develop our own industry. And we keep on asking China, because we are your close friends, because we are close brothers, give us uh, a grant, give us a concession, give us something which you don't give anyone because we are your brotherly country. So I think we need to change the prism uh, by which we look towards China. I think fundamentally, and that is not only from the government's perspective, but as Hassan Daud Saab said, from the business community's perspective. And uh, I've, I, we are working with the chambers. I've gone to the Fez, Faisalabad Chamber of Commerce. We've gone uh, other places. There is no preparedness. There is not a list of products which meet international best practices in which they say, this is the price we can give it to you at. This is the price which you're getting it from other countries. We'll give it, at, give it to you with, in a more competitive price. 
and why don't you buy it? It's why don't we let market economy determine the commerce between China and Pakistan? I think that is very important and it's very simple. It's not very technical. What do we have to sell? What are we selling? Aap kya bech rahe? Jo wo khareedna chahte hai. Yeah, we need to ask that question. We are big tycoons. They go to the Minister of Commerce. They go to the Prime Minister and they complain and they get leverage and they get concessions. And I'm talking very frankly because we need to have a very frank conversation amongst ourselves. Because we can do it for one year, two years, three years, four years, but we can't do it for time ad nauseum, whether it's here or politically. So I think it's very important that that synergy, and Asan Daud Saab, I think, has been doing a great job, and we've been assisting the government, the Pakistan China Institute, in providing and giving that synergy to get serious business groups together. And now CPEG is certainly about business to business collaboration. What are you selling? What are you making with the Chinese want? Don't make them buy it at gunpoint. OK, they'll do you a favor. Fine. But let's move beyond that. And I think that is very, very important. And I think uh, those manufacturers, there should be a list of top 20 manufacturers in Pakistan and what they are producing and how can that fit in with what China is importing. And we should go for the kill. We should clinch it. Also, it's very important, Russia Kai. It's a very big opportunity. Industry should relocate there. Do joint ventures with Chinese companies. Because there's a very big uh, complaint which we get from businesses. The presidents of chambers of commerce, we meet them and they say, and uh, Asad, you're there. We were in Faisalabad together as well. And in Multan, ACC is a close partner. They said, uh, we've been here for hundreds of years, and you're going to give uh, special concessions to Chinese to relocate their industry. And then what will happen to us? <coughs> this is the 21st century. Special economic zones are about special concessions. Pakistan is a high-risk profile country. That's why it's a 6% insurance of Sinoshaw. We say we have a very high interest rate in certain projects because our country risk profile is high. Whether we like it or not, international lenders, whether they're in Washington, whether they're in Beijing, whether they're in Brussels, they rank you as a high-risk profile. We are immune to these bomb blasts. They are not, right? So what we need to do is we need to get these businessmen to make to do GVs, do joint ventures. It's all about joint ventures. Russia, Kai, there is no loan. There is no uh, debt. Uh, there is no. Uh, it's completely being developed from the bottom up by the China Road and Bridge Corporation. I think it's a great feather in the cap of CPEC and Pakistan-China uh, cooperation. So you do joint ventures there. And please, Chinese are very competitive. You, you, you can't say, oh, don't buy goods from China because they are cheaper than ours. Compete. You have to compete. Or if it is difficult to compete, do joint ventures with them. Oh, there's a saying in English, if you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> so do joint ventures. And uh, I think that is the solution those joint ventures you export back to China, expa export to regional countries, export to Afghanistan, export to Iran, exp export. We have a huge region, and diaspora and Gwadar is giving you immense market access. And there's a China Overseas Port Holding has done a tremendous job in the industry, industry free zone which they've established there. You're getting 20 years tax holidays there. It's very, very, very conducive. And I want to go into some specifics. Pakistan China Institute took uh, mineral departments of some provinces to China. Why? Because we are very uh, resource rich. We have minerals in KP. We have minerals in uh, Gilgit, Baltistan. But what's happening? Those And China is the largest collector of minerals. They have huge mining concessions all over the world. But what are we doing? We are doing blasting technique of mining. You know that. Uh, and what happens is you destroy the mineral, and you just to make a quick buck, we are exporting it at a very low price. There is no value addition to the mines, to the minerals. There is no serious mineral policy. You, just with minerals, Pakistan can do wonders. 
exporting it with value addition if you have a mineral zone, mineral processing zone. And the other thing is, Pakistan is an option for China. Let me be very clear. Have you gone to Cambodia? Go to Cambodia. There's an influx of Chinese investment there. Influx. There are hundreds. You know why? Because when they go there, it's a one-window solution. Here, the regulatory environment, or consistently the governments have been working very hard, but there's still a long journey in my view. The regulatory environment here has to improve. Ease of doing business has to improve. And I must say that the government of Prime Minister Imran Khan is certainly making very sincere efforts, but that one window solution is yet to be seen. We are working with a lot of the top Chinese companies. They come for help in research and understanding the situation. They don't know what, what's, where to go. Because after the 18th Amendment, the provinces are empowered to make decisions. But at the same time, you have the Board of Investment in Islamabad. So where do they go? They go to the Chinese embassy. Okay, they'll meet someone influential who can get things done. There is no serious one-window solution for a serious company who doesn't know anyone in Pakistan. They can't work. It's very difficult for them to work. So we have there are other labor-intensive industries. China, sir, used to be the factory for the world. It is now moving to a high-tech, to innovative industries. Go to Huawei's headquarters in Shenzhen. It's bigger and more impressive than Apple's, to be frank. I've been there. The world's factory, China is shifting it to other lesser developed countries. We have the opportunity because of CPEC to become that. We can employ, we have so many people. We have a youth bulge, 65% of our people are under 35. We can get these people employed, but you have to compete with these countries. In Africa, uh, China is shifting its industries. China is shifting its industries to Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Cambodia. In fact, uh, Nigeria. And we are considered Iron Brothers. They call Cambodia Steel Brothers. So it's not all hunky-dory. We have to make efforts. We have to step it up. We have to step up our game. And I think that is very, very important if we want to sell things in China. And the business community has to have more synergy with market, uh, with the market, with the Chinese market, with the government, and with universities market and CPEC driven education. Right now, people, young people, they don't know how to get employment in CPEC uh, projects. And so there's no synergy between the market and the industry. That has to be done. And in China, one of the things which impressed me very much so when I used to visit in my early years was that there was a direct, I went to Tsinghua University, and they said, oh, this is the CEO of Tsinghua Holdings. This is our company. So there's a tri triangle. Government, research, think tank, and company. We need to do it. And time is not on our side. The clock is ticking. So I think that is very important. And uh, we need to compete. I think competitiveness. So the main fundamental, I think, takeaway should be to stand on our two feet rather than looking at the government for concessions, looking at China for concessions. Uh, now, uh, it, very kind of China, very, we are very grateful to China that $1 billion we are giving in social welfare projects. And uh, 27 projects are already uh, going to be in this list, small, small uh, projects. And I was just in Quetta, where we uh, inaugurated the solar tube well uh, project, uh, where solar tube wells are being given as a grant to the villagers. So grants are all very well. I think that's excellent. That's very kind of China that they're giving us grants, but let's move beyond that. And I think only then will we have a robust bilateral commerce rather than one-way commerce, robust bilateral commerce. We have a lot of things to sell, but we need to know how to sell them.